the clock. What's it do? Normally people say, uh, it tells me what time it is. It actually tells us the change in time because we always need to begin with a reference point. So, that makes this a very effective instrument to observe the change in something and in this application, it's time. Alright? So wouldn't it be even more useful if we could observe how other things change with respect to the change in something? Like time? And the answer is, yeah! As a matter of fact, here's your first application. The Federal Reserve Bank, every three months, well, they attempt to quantify, to estimate, which they end up having a ballpark, but a number which reflects the total value of all the goods and services that are produced within an economy, right? Across three months. So they have to uh, go through all their research, talk to major manufacturers, suppliers, and banks, and whatnot. And they have alternative ways of backing out that number, but it uh, takes three months in order to come up with that number. And then they have to adjust it for inflation, which shouldn't be even happening in the first place because uh, if we were using the right technology, we could just do away with monetary inflation altogether. But that's another video. Uh, what I'm saying is that we all get up in the morning to produce something so that in the evening we can consume something, and that happens over and over and over again, and that's the cycle of life. We produce for the sake of consumption and hopefully pass the time as happily as possible. Uh, and they want to see that number get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it move quicker so that people can have uh, quicker access to uh, the things that they need and what they want. So they can be happy. But uh, anyways, what I'm saying is, is that the, the, the true number that they're trying to get at, what the idea that they're trying to get at is how much value is flowing through the system from uh, production to consumption. And, uh, and so it really becomes a measure of Again, how much value is flowing through the system, uh, or even this uh, portion of the system, during this particular period. Well, we can do a much better job at just estimating. We can get that number spot on using a system clock. Because with a system clock, we take three variables. Uh, time, and value, and ownership, and, uh, you know, users, they're just uh, owning things. And then we mingle them together in order to observe uh, economic activity. Okay, now <clears throat> we can do, like I said, a lot better than um, <laughs> estimating this stuff, and we can drill down on just about anything uh, anyone wants. So you get on your browser and say, all right, tell me uh, how much value is being delivered by the steel industry in the southeast uh, over the past month. Query it. Done. There's your answer. You want to know uh, how much uh, value is being delivered by the skateboard industry uh, in the Northeast over the past week. Query it. Done. You know, the Italian food business or whatever. You get the idea is that we can actually drill down on all that activity, even tell you the system-wide performance uh, just over the last second. Anything's possible if you're measuring all the economic activity. Okay. Being able to provide this kind of functionality also means that <laughs> if you're looking to perform uh, an illegal uh, trade such as um, guns or something in California, I just wouldn't recommend it because, I mean, if we were served with a, uh, a warrant to assist in tracking down criminals who just want to make life difficult for everybody else, we'd be happy to assist them. In fact, we're we're looking to help rid the world of a lot of fraudulent and, you know, from financial... In fact, you can't really even perpetrate financial crime here because it's going to be obvious whether you're delivering value or not. But uh, just the idea of, of uh, being able to reduce a lot of paperwork for law enforcement is going to be a, a tremendous uh, <laughs> way in which we can help. Uh, the justice system. So, just want to throw that out there. Uh, you can still have your anonymity and, and uh, you know, use a different name if you want, but just know that when it comes to helping people out, uh, trying to figure out how to get rid of illegal activity, criminal activity that weighs tremendously on, on the uh, shoulders of society. See, this is the point. We're trying to make <laughs> evolution occur, not de-evolution. All right. So, this is what it's going to look like. We're going to take a clock, and if you uh, think about all the money in an economy, 
uh, that's floating around out there among people, take the total amount of money and call that the float, right? Money is just stored value, so we just call this value. Now, putting this in front of the clock, <laughs> I know this is uh, not very sophisticated, but I don't really care for sophistication. I'm more interested in it being correct. So you take a database of value and slap it across a clock, and now if I were to zoom in microscopically on this plate, you would see a bunch of individual uh, units of currency called digital credits. And the digital credits now, they can uh, track what time it is. This is the new second of the day. 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 So, the only uh, variable left to intersect uh, time and value with is ownership, or in other words, users. Now, in an economy that we have today, money is floating around across uh, quote-unquote users, uh, owners of value. Uh, but in this system, instead of the value floating around, it stays put because all it has to do is just keep time. And now users' names change, right? Here we go. And of course, uh, the magnitude, the amount of uh, value can also vary among users. But see, this is the point. Instead of the money moving, uh, the concept of ownership moves across value and therefore Whenever ownership of value changes, that means either revenue has occurred, some form of production, or a transfer payment has occurred, or the collection of taxes has occurred, we can measure just about anything, I mean anything, within the system. And that's how we get the change in ownership of value with respect to time. And we are capable of measuring all activity. So you see, uh, from other videos, we were talking about... Um, transaction IDs being manual triggers of moving ownership of value from one user to the next and then we have value moments which uh, auto form transaction IDs that are involved in the movement of ownership of value from one user to the next but think of it this way if you want this uh, well actually it's four dimensionally but in three dimensions if you want to see this system this is what being able to view all economic events in an economy can actually look like. And then if you factor in the clock behind it, the clock does all the measuring, and so the computer can become the mechanism by which we eliminate the world of all ambiguity and the absence of information with respect to economic activity so that we can just live our lives in peace and not deal with, the, uh, like I said, missing information, which sometimes happens to be a little too convenient for some people and uh, very inconvenient for the rest of us. Okay, Max Funk providing the uh, patent, the patented system clock to equal currency to use in this initial application of being able to observe, measure economic activity um, by looking at the change in ownership of value with respect to time. I'll get into more details uh, concerning equal currency and what we're doing to get that technology up and running and then just if people are interested just more of the uh, other things that I'm involved in Excel about whatever else anybody wants to uh, to ask you can go to the website thanks